Good afternoon. It is my honor to take part in this large gathering of distinguished women leaders from many parts of the globe. I am particularly grateful for the invitation extended to me by the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences, Sciences through SER Monsignor Sorondo for making this participation possible. The Philippines has a prod, promi, predominantly Roman Catholic population who feel a special attachment to Pope Francis and a deep commitment to abide by his call to put an end to modern day slavery and human trafficking. Hence, it is an exceptional opportunity for me to be able to, to be allowed inside this August Hall and historic venue. The Philippines for many years is said to be a source country and to a much lesser extent a destination and transit country for men, women, and children subject to sex trafficking and forced labor. Fortunately, in 2016 and 2017, it was announced by the U.S. State Department that the Philippine ranking was upgraded to Tier 1 as a direct result of the efforts of the government of the Philippines to elim eliminate human trafficking. Tier 1 indicates that a government has acknowledged the existence of human trafficking, made efforts to address the problem, and complies with the minimum standards of trafficking victims protection law. However, it does not mean that all is well in this area, as there remains more room for improvement and for us to go beyond the accepted minimum standard. The serious problem of human trafficking and prostitution of women and children are of grave concern in the Philippines that led to the enactment of a law which is intended to institute policies to eliminate trafficking in persons, especially women and children, establishing the necessary institutional mechanisms for the protection and support of trafficked persons and to provide penalties for violations. The Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, which was adopted in 2003, was sponsored by a senator who mentioned that trafficking in human beings is tantamount to modern day slavery at work. It is the most insidious form of violence against persons. The Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act is based on the state policy that values the dignity of every human person and guarantees respect of individual rights. In this law, the Philippines declared its commitment to comply with international instruments which embodies, embody the universal human rights principles, such as the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, the UN Convention on the Protection of Migrant Workers and Their Families, the UN Convention Against Transnational organized crime, including its protocol to prevent, suppress, and punish trafficking in persons, especially women and children, and all other relevant and universally accepted human rights instruments, especially those to which the Philippines is signatory. Accordingly, the law seeks to meet the international standards in preventing 
and prosecuting as well as adjudicating human trafficking cases and protecting and rehabilitating victims of human trafficking. The law adopts the usual definition of trafficking in persons. Um, this is similar to the um, definition given to us by the speaker who talked about the San Diego experience in this regard. So I just want to emphasize that in our law, the recruit, recruitment, transportation, transfer, or harboring or receipt of persons may be with or without the victim's consent or knowledge, and it may be done within or across national borders. The means employed may be by threat, use of force, or other forms of coercion, abduction, fraud, deception, abuse of power or position, taking advantage of the vulnerability of the person, or the giving or receiving of payments or benefits to achieve the consent of a person having control over another person. And the purpose is exploitation, which includes at a minimum the exploitation or the prostitution of others or other forms of sexual exploitation, forced labor or services, slavery, servitude, or the removal or sale of organs. It is important to mention that children in this law deserve a special treatment so that if the traffic person is a child, there is no need to prove any of the means set forth in the law for one to be convicted of the crime of trafficking in persons. The comprehensive, total, and well-coordinated government approach to combat human trafficking is done through the Interagency Council Against Trafficking, established by the law in order to ensure, one, the apprehension and prosecution of offenders, and two, the recovery, rehabilitation, and reintegration of victims into the mainstream of society. The very broad composition of the Interagency Council shows the importance that the Philippine government accords to the elimination of human trafficking. It also demonstrates the intention of the government to deal with all aspects of human trafficking that must be addressed and remedied. So that the council is composed of high-ranking government officials in the executive branch and concerned non-governmental organization. The secretary, which is the equivalent of a minister in other jurisdiction, is of the Department of Justice, is the chairperson of this council. The other members are the, the secretary of the Department of Welfare, and Development, the Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment, the Administrator of the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, the Commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration, the Director of the Philippine National Police, the Chairperson of the National Commission on the Role of Filipino Women, and one representative each from the NGO representing the women's sector, the NGO representing overseas Filipino workers, and the representative from the NGO uh, representing the children's sector. No stone is left unturned in addressing human trafficking, such that there are numerous other relevant, relevant national government agencies which are tasked to implement programs and services for the prevention and suppression of trafficking in persons and the protection of traffic victims. 
So we have the Department of Interior and Local Government, uh, Tourism, Education, Health, Transportation and Communication, the Commission on Human Rights, the National Bureau of Investigation, the Philippine Center on Trans Transnational Crime, Overseas Workers Welfare Administration, the Council for the Welfare of Children, the Philippine Information Agency, and the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority. For lack of material time, it suffices here to state that the responsibilities of these government agencies can be gleaned from the names and the titles of these agencies which are self-explanatory. Regarding the functions of ECAT, the, the ECAT formulates a comprehensive and integrated program to prevent and suppress trafficking in persons as well as see to it that trafficking in persons are effectively prosecuted and the perpetrators convicted. I just want to emphasize one important function of this council, which is to formulate a program for the reintegration of trafficked persons in cooperation with the Department of Labor and Employment, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority, the Commission on Higher Education, the local government units, and the non-governmental organizations. On the part of the Supreme Court, the court has issued administrative circular number 151 in 2010, which directs all trial court judges to prioritize and expedite the disposition of trafficking in persons cases. A continuous trial system is now being implemented in all trial courts nationwide in order to expedite the disposition of cases. The training of judges are regularly done to enhance their capacity in dealing with uh, trafficking in persons cases, particularly to give them technical knowledge to deal with online sexual exploitation of children, which is this training are being done under the supervision of the Philippine Judicial Academy. The special training modules were developed for this purpose. Trafficking in persons, the most common, the most common case of trafficking in persons involved recruitment done on the pretext, pretext of domestic or overseas employment or training. When parties are de deceived into, uh, into seeking opportunities work opportunities when the real purpose is to engage in prostitution and make them a captives as sex slaves. Now, I, I just want to, before I end, I just want to, to mention that we have, in our law, the term qualified trafficking in persons which deserve the imposition of severe penalties such as life imprisonment and two million to five million fine, and which will award moral and exemplary damages to the victims of trafficking in persons. Uh, moral damages will, is intended to, to answer for the mental anguish, serious anxiety, wind, wounded feelings, and other similar, um, uh, similar consequence on the part of the victim, and that's, that will amount to 500,000 pesos, and exemplary damage is by way of example. A, a, a qualified trafficking is committed by a syndicate, which where three or more persons conspired together to commit uh, trafficking in persons. And another qualified trafficking in persons is one committed in large scale, meaning there are three or more persons who are trafficked, whether individually or, or as a group. Am I? 
The trafficking of children is also very common and that ex includes sex tourism. And we have a special crime, which is the online sexual exploitation of children. The problem here is that parents or other members of the family of the child is involved in the perpet perpetration of the crimes due to poverty and the lack of understanding of the adverse effect on the child of online sexual exploitation. The parents and the members of the family think that because the child is not touched or there is no personal contact, there is no harm done to the child. So we have passed a law uh, which penalizes uh, child pornography. Consent of the victim is not material. So whether the victim <laughs> consents to the commission of the crime of trafficking in person and, and the cyber crime, uh, online exploitation of children that will not exonerate the accused um, for the commission of this crime. There are still a lot to be done in terms of uh, addressing the problem of trafficking in persons. But the, the government of the Philippines is exerting vigorous efforts to see to it that we go beyond the minimum standards set universally in addressing the issue of trafficking in persons. We have uh, a very good experience in international cooperation in combating um, tra human trafficking, such that uh, the, the Philippines has worked with the US, the Australia and Netherlands in preventing um, the human trafficking in the Philippines and apprehending and arresting um, the perpetrators of human trafficking. Because of this experience, of the Philippines, we appreciate opportunities like this to participate in international forum where we can share experiences and knowledge on the best practices on how to prevent trafficking in persons. For all of you and the insights and knowledge that I gained during this day and still to be gained tomorrow, I thank you all. I went beyond the time. <laughs> thank you so much, Your Honor.